Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to implement authentication and authorization in an ADF application and we're going to be using an ADF login page as opposed to a default HTML login page. So we're first of all going to be creating a JSPX page that has two fields. We have an input field for the username and one for the password. And we also have a button on there that's going to then call a managed bean. And then the managed bean is going to be tapping into our ADF authentication servlet. As I mentioned, we're going to be working with a managed bean. So let's go ahead and create that first. There's going to be two fields in there, one for the username and one for the password. And those are going to be mapped onto the, the input fields in our page. So we'll just right click on our view controller. Right now I just have a, a blank ADF Fusion application. I'm going to create a new Java class and I'm just going to call this Login Bean. Don't worry about these two check marks right here. Okay, so now that we have those guys, we're going to create two private variables. And let's right click on here and then generate our accessors. Now we're going to need a method in here that returns a string. This is going to be the do login method. For right now, let's just say return null. We're going to be adding some more code to this in just a moment. Okay, so but we have the backbone of our bean. And so now we're going to right click on our view controller and create our new login page. So let's just call this login.jspx. We'll just do a blank page for right now. Later down the road, if you wanted to create a template for your pages and apply those to your pages, that would be fine. Okay, so just to make things nice and simple, I'm going to go into my layouts right here. And in fact, I can just right click here on my form and say, I'm gonna put a panel form layout. And inside the panel form layout, we're going to have an input text. In fact, we're going to do that twice. And then under general controls, we have our button. So let's change the attributes or the properties here. We're going to have this say username. Now the corresponding value, we can go into here and You'll see that we don't have a managed bean reference for our login bean because we haven't uh, registered that with our ADFC config file. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. We just go to overview mode, manage beans, hit the plus icon, and now we can go ahead and let's just call it login bean. The fully qualified class name is com firebox training dot view dot login bean and we're going to make this request scope okay so now that that's saved let's go back to this page right here here's our username okay the value here's our login bean there's the username hit ok now I can make this a little faster copy this Go to the second field, paste it, and then tweak it. Now the password, when the user uh, during runtime, when the user is typing it in, we don't actually want to see what they're typing, so we'll find the secret field and set that to true, so it'll just show up as a bunch of dots, and then we'll change the text on our command button to say login. And of course, we need to set the action. Let's use our expression builder. There's our do login. And also during runtime, when the user hits enter, we want the login button to automatically submit. So what we can do is click on our form, and you'll see that under default command, we can then select our command button. Okay, so drill down to where your command button is and there it is. 
Now before we do any coding for our bean, let's go ahead and create a page that we want to make protected. So I'll just right click and say new and I'll call this protected page.jspx. And we'll just put a real basic panel header on here. Like that. Let's also create an error page in case uh, some kind of login went wrong. So we'll right click and we'll call this error.jspx. Let's go to programming our bean again. Our bean is going to be using classes that belong to jar files that we need to explicitly include in our controller project. So let's just right click on here. We'll go to Project Properties and then Libraries and Class Path. And this is where you can create your own library and then add it or just add them directly right here. What I'm going to do is um, go right over to my Oracle middleware. Okay, so first of all, let's go to our modules. You'll see here we're looking for COM BEA Core Web Logic. Okay, dot security getting closer, and you're looking for the auth.jar file right there. The second one you need, similar location, let's go to where we were. And uh, this time we need identity.jar. And then the third one we need is actually going to be under the WL server, under that server directory, lib, and we're looking for WLS dash api.jar. Okay, so now that we have those, we can go ahead and start coding. Our bean code is right here. And let's go to our do login right here. And what we need to do is get programmatic access to what the user uh, typed in. Um, you know, during runtime when they provided their credentials. So remember that was the underscore username and password. So in here we're going to say string un equals underscore username and then our byte pw equals underscore password dot get bytes. I'll explain in a minute why we're using bytes instead of string. Now what we want to do is get our faces context. So we call get current instance. If I do an alt enter, it will automatically import it for me. Okay. So we'll just call this variable CTX. And now let's go ahead and get the context get external context. We get the request, which returns an HTTP servlet request. So of course we're going to have to downcast this. It's javax.servlet.http. And now I go ahead and cast it. Now the next thing we're going to do is call the authentication. There's a static method in there. URL callback handler. And in this constructor we're going to pass in the username and the password. Okay. Now let's surround this with a try catch. And let's call this my subject. Now we're going to call the servlet authentication. Okay, so there is a 
Uh, this belongs to WebLogic Servlet Security. Be, be aware that this is all WebLogic specific. Uh, so if you're using some other kind of container, you're going to have to use uh, other code. Now there's a method in there called run as, and it takes two arguments. So we're going to pass in the subject as well as the request object. Now let's call this request just to make the variables a little bit more uh, descriptive. And now we're going to generate a new session ID. So once again we say servlet authentication dot generate new session ID passing in the request. Now the servlet that is going to be performing authentication for us, ADF authentication, uh, is at the location of slash ADF authentication. Okay, so what we're going to do is build a URL string. I can right click on here and uh, reformat this so it looks a little nicer. And so here I'll say string login URL equals slash ADF authentication question mark and then we specify what the success URL is. Okay, so it's going to be the faces slash and then the name of our file. So remember the name of our, our file here was uh, protectedpage.jspx. Now let's get the response. So what we're going to do is take our context, get the external context, get response, and even though it says it returns an object, really what we're working with is an HTTP servlet response. Name that accordingly, and of course, downcast that. Our next step, we need to get the request dispatcher. So the easiest way to do that is just to say request dot get request dispatcher, and you'll see here that it returns a request dispatcher. So there it is. Now we need to pass in an argument. That needs to be the login URL. Now, of course, we could have all sorts of exception handling in here. Right now, I'm just going to create some really basic one. Uh, I'm going to change this data type in the catch to be a failed login exception. And now we're going to provide some logic inside here. Now, if we have a failed login, we need to provide some kind of handling. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just create a faces message object. And as the first argument in this constructor, we can put in here a faces message dot, and we can specify severity error if we want to. So we're going to put this twice. This is for the summary and the detail of the faces message. Right click on here, reformat it so it looks a little nicer. Once you create that faces message object, you can then add it to the context. Now in here you can make this a failed login exception. Okay, and, uh, and then here, just make sure that you have all the, the exception handling required. In fact, if I want to have an additional catch in here just to catch any type of exception, I can do that. Now the last thing we want to do in here is go ahead and perform the forward. So here we have our dispatcher and we call the forward method. Notice that it takes a servlet request and a servlet response. So we are now done with our bean code. Let's save that and 
And that concludes our bean code. Go to part two for this video to see how we create the users and groups.